Hi, everyone. Hi, Thomas. I'm happy to be here with you today. Um, and I'm happy to uh, moderate this session about what is uh, responsible communication, marketing. We, we will discuss this with Thomas, and uh, I'm sure you will, uh, we will explore that it's much more today. Just for the auditors, you know that you can ask questions in the chat. Um, I have a, a great time here, and I will try to, uh, to push your question as, as we are going on. So, Thomas, just let me say a few words about you. So you began your career in an uh, advertising agency. You worked for 18 years um, with companies, NGOs, governments, and uh, trying to support them um, regarding their communication, trying to push more responsible ways to do that and to connect with their stakeholders. So I think we can say you, that you're both observe the trends going on and also try to influence things. I like also the way you describe yourself. You say that you are a, a marketing um, activist in a mission, yeah. in a mission. And this mission is to put, it is to, to, is to push um, business to put people and planet first. Well, you're not really undercover, right? Because this mission has been pushed uh, into three very successful books. So the first one, is actually uh, good, good, good advertising, right? So it's much good more advertising. Yes. good advertising. Yeah. Uh, so it's much more than a book because it's 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 now a movement. You write this book in 2012, and I have just to to stop there a moment to say that I'm the CSR director for McCain Food, and. Uh, when I see that and your book and that you, you really promoted at some time a uh, purpose-driven company, I said, yes, we are doing the great thing. We just, you know, release our purpose at the higher level of our company this year. But then I discovered that this year you decided to publish a new book. And uh, this book... Sorry about that. Yeah, well, you just <laughs> made my life so much complicated right now, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this book is uh, uh, Hero Trap. And so let's say that, well, you have been quite visionary because in 2012, you were one of the first people, one uh, talking about purpose and how purpose can be a great vehicle for businesses to embrace their sustainability journey. But maybe a decade, almost a decade after, you may have observed some a lot of things, and that we will discuss now. And today you say, well, maybe there is too much purpose there. Maybe there is too much uh, values there, or too much story. Um, and so uh, this is really interesting, and one of the reasons I was really impatient to have this discussion with you. As a practitioner of sustainability in a multinational company, uh, you may imagine that we are actually trapped in this dilemma of should we tell the story of sustainability knowing that there is so much risks about um, being tagged of greenwashing or uh, green and being the victim of green bashing but at the same time when we are not telling your story you let the opportunity to people to tell the story um, on your behalf and then also the consumer can accuse you to not do enough for the planet and so um, this is where I want to start the conversation. So um, are you still uh, promoting purpose uh, as a good vehicle for, for companies? Or at least let's tell us the story. What brings you to the purpose and what makes you think that we should go uh, ahead of that now? <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and, and thanks so much for that introduction. And yes, I'm, I'm, I mean, uh, I think as an industry, as a marketing industry, we have uh, a huge trans responsibility on, you know, on the impact we have on people's lives. And I think that things that kind of provoked me to write, write that first book, Good Advertising. Because, I mean, at that time, a decade into my advertising career, I kind of felt, I mean, I'm responsible for sellers in cities that are already way too congested, 
you know, I'm selling cheeseburgers um, to people in the Western world who might already be a bit too fat. So, what what is what is my what is what is the role of advertising, and can it as 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 the um, one that fuels consumption, as the one that uh, sparks consumerism, can it then take a more responsible approach? And, and that was what I said at the first book. Um, and as, as you said, I think the interesting thing is then if we fast forward a decade now, that's part, then every brand, every company, every CEO is suddenly standing on stage and talk about sustainable development goals. Yeah, we want to save the sea turtles. Yes, we want to cut down on consumption and all these things. So what, what used to be something that was very unique, some, a, a higher purpose, something where you um, where you looked up to a leader and said, oh, the leader is actually a driving force for good. It does seem like you can barely not go into the supermarket without every brand kind of claiming to be a military. And that's kind of why I thought, let's try and, let's try and reframe this. Let's try and find a, a new way into purpose. And also, secondly, because I'm not seeing the much needed change happening fast enough on a consumer level. Um, so we, we need to find a way to push people towards change. Okay, so here is a, here's a, a question for you, because we had some conversation before um, uh, today to, to understand what do you, do, me, do, do you push for, and I quite like the, the, um, the example you told me. You said, well, today a consumer, when you go to the supermarket, is surrounded with products that claim they are the best um, activists, let's say, in this domain or, or for planet or for people. And then when you have to decide, it's, it's a little bit more complicated today. So for the consumer to, to understand the messages and the information. So this brings you to say in a way that being a purpose-driven company or giving information about what you are doing in terms of sustainability it's now not enough right it's not what the consumer wants not anymore so what what does he want <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think the issue is that uh I think we have been in a period where obviously, you know, people have had very high expectations towards companies and, and leaders. And there's been a lot of surveys like have as meaningful brands that said, you know, people want companies to play a uh, role in solving some of societies uh, and, 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 and some of the climate challenges that we, we're facing today. Um, but I think, I, think the, I think the core issue is that uh, sustainability has become, and, and, and sorry for the analogy, it's almost become what, you know, long lasting taste was to chewing gums in the 90s. So it's become this kind of techie advertising lingo. That, and I think consumers are becoming a little bit more uh, critical towards, um, towards what they are, uh, towards those messages. Uh, so the drive that I'm seeing is, in fact, that, you know, it's not enough just to claim all sorts of world bettering stuff. Because what is it really that is delivering point? What is it that's the proof point that I, as Thomas, can say, yes, I believe what you're doing at McCain. Yes, I believe what you're doing at Coca-Cola. Yes, I believe what you're doing at some of the world's best in terms of making the world sustainable and making my life more sustainable. And that's why I thought we need a new approach because Companies often, leaders way too often pitch themselves as the heroes. Mm -hmm. And I think now young people want to be the agents of change. I kind of call it the Greta Thunberg uh, generation, right? They, they, they want to be part of it. They, 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 they want to live more sustainably. And so this is a real opportunity for brands and leaders to take a new look at, at purpose and leadership. And that's exactly what I, what I tried to set out in the book to kind of avoid what, what I call a hero trap. Okay, so let's a little bit deep dive on, on, on your book and um, what are the traps you see or you, you have seen? Because, I mean, you, you were 
working and supporting companies to understand what could be their purpose. And so you may have observed a lot of um, effort and co companies going into this journey of purpose. So then what are the traps you're talking about? What are the hero traps? What could they be? Do you have examples or do you name them? Yes, for sure. I mean, the, the, the big... The, the, the big change that I was, I was with, witnessing was obviously that people were becoming much more critical towards companies' efforts. So even though more and more companies talked about uh, purpose, it didn't, wasn't really resonating with people. It, it did seem like uh, people weren't believing the messages of companies. Uh, people weren't see them, seeing them as authentic. And... Because in the first book, I kind of set out that thesis with purpose, and I was a big purpose. So I had to kind of question my own belief and say, why is it that it, that it goes wrong? Why is it that when see companies like um, uh, Volkswagen that's recently uh, gone through the whole diesel gate scan, and lots of these other companies that um, are being applauded, as, as some of, of, of the best when you look at the Dow Jones, the Dead Berlin Index, and, 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 and similar kind of rank. Uh, and, and, and the thing the thing I saw was maybe it's because, you know, we put up a, a leadership that is way too self-absorbed, that's too navel-gazing. Let me give you one example of why I think the approach is, is wrong. And I, I know this is a company that is very beloved in the sustainability space. It's to give you the example because if you listen, listen to the purpose, for example, of uh, Patagonia, we all know Patagonia, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So they say, uh, we're in, we in, we in this to save our home planet. And, and I think that sounds like a pretty big, bold purpose, right? You know, mm -hmm. They want to save our home planet. So they put themselves and pit themselves as the world hero. And, and what I've witnessed over the last 10 obviously when you take that hero's pedestal, it's so easy to criticize because what is enough? What, uh, how are you helping people live more sustainably? How are you helping, I don't actually like the word consumers, how are you helping people live more sustainably? Whereas I think what is needed now is a different approach that motivates people to create change and, and, and so in the book, I, I detailed this uh, process I call the arrow that was inspired by uh, psychotherapy and coaching. And it's eventually a different leadership question. So who can you help people become? So how can you as a leader or as a company drive people towards the change that they want to see in their lives? And then it's not a big, bold claim. You're, you're basically unlocking you know, healthier living, uh, greener lifestyles, uh, uh, more more connected, more conscious communities by asking that thing. Because it's not about your company's uh, mission and vision and goals and dreams and, and, and a lot of these uh, 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 statements we see in, in corporate headquarters, you know, do good for people and planet. But it's actually something that's linked to my vision and my dreams. So that was something uh, that interviewing leaders in this space uh, investigating uh, cases from brands and, and doing, uh, we did, did uh, quite a big bespoke uh, survey. We found out that by taking this approach, by humble approach, by putting people's dreams and aspirations first, uh, these companies and, and these leaders were much better at um, creating uh, authentic leadership and actually driving people uh, to the change that we, we so much need in society today. Yeah, this is really interesting. I think you said a lot of interesting things. Let's let's try to um, take some time to go a little bit deeper on, on each one. First thing that I heard, and you said, maybe we are not asking ourselves this, the good question. And that's right. Yeah. Often we ask ourselves, what should we do? So what should we do? So this the answer can be the purpose and then then, of course, our mindset and framework of business really pragmatic say, okay, what should we do? We want to do this. And then how we should do that. And so action plans, frameworks, roadmap, we are so good at this. And also, yeah. we believe in it. I mean, generally, we think that 
um, you need to answer the what and the, the, the how and make it very clear with strong targets, credible ones, uh, verified ones, in order to give a sincere and authentic information to the, to the consumer. But then you come in the picture and you tell me, but maybe Karima, the good question to ask ourselves today is who? Yeah. Who should do that? And sh with who you should engage? And who, it's more like who should tell the story? In and, and for me, and for me, it's 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 yeah. For because it's about meaning, it's about meaningfulness. The fact that I think uh, the relationship between brands and companies at stake. And if we don't if we don't heal that relationship, which is at a at a uh, quite a critical point in history, because if we look at service again, for example, from Havis Meaningful Brands. It says that the majority of people today don't care whether two thirds of brands and companies disappear. So it's a really breakdown point in trust. And for me, it becomes about meaningfulness. So what companies, what leaders play a meaningful role in your life? And, and, and I think that's where it becomes really essential. And, 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 and when, you, when you talk about what the questions we should ask ourselves, I think the thing is that Companies want to repair this relationship. So they start talking about purpose. They start pitching themselves and, and, and thinking about their bigger role in society. But, but for me, it's a, a very kind of inside out perspective. Yeah. It's, it's looking for, it's, it's almost looking for the key to repairing or solving that relationship. You're only looking inside the house. But the keys are actually outside the house to, to kind of unlock yeah. that change and unlock it. So yeah. would, you, would you agree to see it's more about which story are we, are we talking about? When we are in our current understanding, I would say um, I, should take, I should tell the story behind my product. So I'm telling my story, the story of my company. But what I hear from you now is, no, you should... Here is a story from your consumer. What is, what is his story? And then how you fit in the story, what you can bring to this story to make it happen more easily or to make it, yeah, to help him um, realize his story. Am I, am I right? You're absolutely right. I think it's because the exercise is still stuck in advertising. Uh, in the advertising land, in the, in the world of, in the mad world of advertising, where for some reason it's been this bragging game. And, and certainly it's been about bragging about all the good things we do in society, rather than actually trying to translate what those actions, what those changes, how they can, how they can really impact my life. And, 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 and let me give you a uh, an example, I mean, if you look at and we can obviously um, criticize a brand like IKEA for fast furniture and, 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 and a lot of other things, but if we see how they've improved operations, they, you know, uh, all that uh, wood is going to see a forest bed, uh, lots of energy coming from, or all the energy coming from renewable uh, sources, etc. But, but the change they've done in the last one and a half year is really to say, Let's focus now on people and see how can we get one billion people to live more sustainably. And part of that is obviously uh, reinventing the product portfolio, offering LED light bulbs, um, uh, teaching uh, uh, people uh, how to live more sustainably. I mean, they're opening different types of stores where you can go in and, and, and work with uh, circularity, remaking your furniture, learn how to cook and bake, etc. So I think it's that it's that shift. And then secondly, I think the problem is for a lot of big companies, it is uh, massive change, and I, I'm sure you can recognize that from McCain as well. It's an oil tank almost that you've got to shift course. And it takes time, but people might not have that uh, uh, patience. And, 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 and so I think a lot of the messages that we put out in the sustainability space doesn't make a lot of, 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 
uh, sense. I'll, I'll give you an analogy, and, 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 and sorry for the analogy, but let's say after this talk, I catch my girlfriend uh, in being unfaithful. So she, she's with another man, and, and I, I, I called her. She's saying, you know, okay, Thomas, you caught me. This is wrong. But I promise you, towards 2030, I'm going to be a little bit less unfaithful each year until in 2030 when we're back together. And for some reason, most companies think that they can get away with that in a CSR mindset when they say, oh, we're going to face our fossil fuels. We're going to do X, Y, Z with our packaging in 2025 and 2030. But it's not how that works in a relationship. So, I th so we really kind of need to revisit how we do communication and, and, and really put meaning and, and people in my life at the center stage of that change that needs to happen. Can you share with us some examples? You, you share a little bit um, IKEA, but I know that you have um, other in, e example in mind of, because what you're saying is much more than branding, is how, how you design your how, how yeah how you design your service or your product but with of with of with the consumer or his who is leading in this story who should lead and yeah should have you some examples of 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 uh, uh, of this new type of way of doing business yeah i think for me it's very much about leadership so it's, 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 it's really not just about branding. It is really about how the company acts uh, uh, at corporations. And for me, that, that really comes with that uniting thought, that North Star. And everybody within the organization gets inspired by, wakes up in the morning, say, yes, I get this. That's why I work here. That's, that, that's why I'm passionate. That's why I want to challenge myself. And I think that's sometimes what ends up being wrong with some of these purposes when they become these big, uh, almost statements that's too good for its own good, like we're in the business to save our home planet. Because most people don't go to work just to save our home planet. But a lot of us go to work for um, creativity, for things that motivate us. And, and so let me give you an example. I mean, this, uh, this is in the health space. Um, but this uh, uh, health insurance company called the story, the person in seven markets, and, and, and what they talk about is incentivizing people to live. So that's their purpose. It's very much focused on personal enablement, pushing, the, pushing their customers to live healthier lives. And in that way, it's about making customers to the heroes of the narrative. So they can't really point fingers at the insurance company if they don't become healthy, because it's this dialogue, it's this interaction, it's this interrelationship. And, and by doing that, they've been incredibly successful in actually pivoting their customers to live healthier lives. They've done a survey uh, with uh, about 200,000 200, customers, and the one that that not in, in the health of vitality actually exercised 5.2 days so one of the things that I really want to stand in the, the new book was, in fact, how do we create change? And are leaders that take the who can help people become approach much more successful? And, and discovery is one case. And another, another thing we did was, uh, I referred to that a bit earlier, but this survey we did with the Marketing University of Bari, where we compared classical purposeful messages with these what I call transformative messages. And in generally generally speaking, the transformative messages were 29.4% more successful at actually motivating me to, uh, to to be in the driver's seat, to take action. And, and I think that really resonates with uh, what young generations expect when you talk about the expectations of companies across product and services. I mean, because at the end of the day, we need to figure out how do we stop this consumption drive? How can we get people to be more, uh, more conscious? Um, so those, those were some of the 
questions that I asked myself in the book, and and, uh, and and I think I think it comes down to this, this pivotal change in leadership from seeing yourself as the hero to making people the hero. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, there is also um, a, a wording you're, you're using, and I think it's the right moment to bring it up because you're, you're talking about leadership um, and also, in a way, creating a culture where everybody feels empowered within the company and creative and really embrace a mindset that um, work toward make how our, how our, make the living easier and healthier, maybe greener. Um, it is empowerability. You are talking about empowerability. So who should be empowered? Is it only because you, you describe this empowerability within the company? Uh, yeah. What about should it, what about uh, outside the outside the company? How how should we redefine this this uh, inside outside relationship? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting question because I think it's about that uh, thing I talked about earlier about meaning and why we go to work, why we do what we do, and I mean if, even if you look at, at the kind of good old theory of, of Love about self-actualization, the fact that we do things because we love doing them. I mean, I wave surf. I don't get paid for wave surfing, but but I like like being out there on, on, on the waves. And as a creative, when I started the advertising industry, I started as a copywriter. Uh, you know, I just I just love that. Um, um, you know, I loved breaking or solving problems. I love coming up with creative solutions. And and what I see. From some of these companies who ask who can help people become Christian is that it puts people's dreams and aspirations first. And if you take a company, I mean, I'm calling it Denmark today, at, and Lego is obviously a, a, a quite well known uh, company globally. And, and, and I think when, 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 when you hear what they're saying, they talk about inspiring the builders of tomorrow. And, and that's, a, that's a mantra, that's a North Star that inspires both. Internally in the company is something that I definitely recognize because I had with employees uh, inside uh, you know, the legal business. And it's something that inspires both uh, young builders and I gotta say that sometimes uh, playing with Lego breaks as well. So, so it's, it's, I think for this organization, it, it is really about finding those, uh, those truths, those things, those barriers, those possibilities that are so human that we all want to, that we all drive towards. And, and the companies and the leaders that can help us overcome some of these obstacles or help us achieve some of those dreams, I think those are the ones that provide meaning. And, and in, in, in my book, those are the ones that, if we ever want to use the word uh, purpose, I think those are the ones that are uh, truly uh, purposeful. We have a, a question um, from uh, from the audience, and I want to share it with you because I think it's it's in the continuity of our discussion. Um, the, the the person asks: Is there any example of uh, of some that have given consumers of some companies? Uh, do you have in mind some companies who have given consumers the ability of bringing change? Yeah, yes, definitely. I think there is. And I think it, it today is uh, an expectation that a lot of companies don't know how to cope with, to be honest, because they, for some reason, they like to be in control. And in, in some instances, how this space is changing it, that if you look at young people today, they expect everything to happen with just the click of a button. If they want to start a business tomorrow, they can do that. And and, and, and I think the, the one of the biggest, ex or, or one of the recent examples where I really witnessed this change was when I, I sometimes do lectures at, at business schools. And one business school, I did Copenhagen Business School, actually, about 300 students in the room. Uh, I had done a, a keynote with a couple of brands in the room from big, big corporations, and 
know, I, I asked, I asked the students in the room how many of them would love it to work in these big corporates. And remember, it's a pistol, and only 30 of the 300 students wanted to go and work for big corporates. The rest of them saw themselves as you know, entrepreneurs, they wanted to go and share the status quo, do their own thing. So, so I think there's very much this uh, uh, ask from all participatory uh, companies. What I came across uh, is the soup, it's a uh, Spanish uh, telco that is a collaborative uh, phone company. And one of the things they, they, they do is, in fact, that instead of having a typical customer service, uh, we could call in, you could say, oh, I don't know how this works, help me set up my data packet. Then it's actually uh, some of the more uh, technical savvy customers who take part in that customer support. So I've seen lots of new experiment on uh, companies in, in doing this. I found an amazing example from a Swedish company called Wheelit, basically coffee bicycles. And, and, and uh, when, I, when I talked to one of the founders, Marie Lepard, what she wanted was to create a, a business where uh, everybody, no matter what the dreams were, were the environment where it was about and, and she actually did uh, first really she opened was actually out, out of Starbucks, uh, and and uh, they did this. It's a video on YouTube. You can search for videos. And in that one hour, they actually ended up getting more coffee than Starbucks. And, and it's been a really successful uh, scale-up case. Uh, that's that's in in just uh, four years. They ended up being in all markets. And then it took uh, Starbucks uh, twenty years to go into the current market. Kind of micro franchise, super prototype way of, or uh, in a much more collaborative way of, of looking at this. So, so it's, I, I think that's at least two examples of, of uh, how companies need to open up and and become a, a platform for people's creativity and aspirations. Okay, great. We have another question, and I think we can spend that. Um, uh, the, this uh, end of discussion about the future. I mean, yeah. well, you, you have been visionary. Eh? Ten years ago, you were talking about purpose, and now you're you're urging us to to um, to look at the the consumer and uh, his story and put him uh, um, in the center of of building um, the, the the relationship between with the company. And, and so uh, we have a question, which is, what the next moves? What 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 will be the title of your next book in ten years? What I mean, in another way, what is the trend you are seeing? How do you imagine the revolution uh, of communication? Um, or or in another way, what is your your dream about? Uh, what do you would like to see in ten years happening in terms of marketing and communication? What what this role would look like in ten years? Yeah, I think one of the things I've always been drawn to when we talk about sustainability and and, and especially the perspective I take in the new book. For me, it's really about. Uh, philosophical questions like what makes a good life and how can we enable uh, better living for the many people and how many with, with the planet. So those, those are some of the, I think, core questions that that we need to ask ourselves. And the trend that I portray in the book is this move from where every company today and every leader today is screaming purpose towards what I kind of see as the virgin post-purpose uh, uh, market reality where people aren't just buying why you make what you do, but actually the who, so who can help people become, which is about, you know, uh, healthier living, more conscious living, more greener living, uh, which, which is also for me a, a, a very important key point if we as a marketing industry, as an advertising industry, um, should keep our relevance in the world going forward. 
because we can't consume at the same levels we're consuming today. And by that, I see also a trend in the way that we, we consume, which also kind of explains this transition towards a, a sort of a post-purpose, post-consumerist society. Because when I was, uh, when I was about 15 or so, uh, my biggest wish for my birthday was uh, a boombox, so one with two cassettes tape and a CD player. And uh, I had to nag my parents to get this boombox. Uh, they're school teachers. I don't know what it is about school teachers, but it took a lot of nagging. Um, what I see today, though, is my niece, uh, who, when she turned 50, uh, Clara, and she's a tiny girl, what she wanted for her birthday was, in fact, to jump out of the movie airplane in a parachute. <laughs> and, and, and that kind of really illustrates how uh, young generations today don't um, see you know, things or status in the same way. As, as we did, and I realized that the best things in life, in fact, they're much more curious about, uh, learning new things, about experiences, and, and obviously we see this in, in how, for example, if you look at the travel industry, um, you don't necessarily have some sort of fancy restaurant to buy a meal or buy a kind of a buy t shirt and say, you know, I'm saving the, the sea turtles. There's not a lot of that when, at least in our affluent world, uh, people can do that. But the real status is actually being earned through accomplishment, uh, through experience. So, and, and I think that's a real uh, interesting uh, potential drive of innovation for companies. If they can start thinking about how can we stop selling things, how can we stop this addiction and stuff, and understand that people actually want uh, meaningfulness, people want different things. And one example um, is uh, obviously a pivot in, in business models. Uh, I mean, if you look at uh, a, 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 a big, you know, a, a example from a big brand would be, for example, how IKEA today have these small stores uh, in cities, rather than these mega malls, and then you can go in are some you know, interior designers sitting ready to help you design a home uh, or there's a, um, there's a, uh, a company called District Vision uh, out of the US. And they basically sell running glasses, uh, a bit more beautifully designed. But uh, the two founders, Max and Tom, basically talk about how they sell for running. That if we want to run well, we need to connect our head with our bodies. So this is new one in classes in uh, the prison system in, in New York. They teach uh, inmates uh, mindful training. So I think it's really trying to understand how you can actually uh, move more into the transformation and not just all physical products, but, but, but service likes. I mean, Nike is really great. Another example of a company that would fuel bad uh, that with Nike Plus, uh, that with a lot of these other things are actually helping me uh, keep motivated and inspiring to go further uh, in my running or in my athleticism or whatever sport I'm doing. So I think those are kind of two key things that that I that I hope and obviously with with us is that the the ultimate mission of understanding how. How do we create uh, a meaningful life? How 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 do we create a good good life? Thank you. I think we have time for another question, and uh, it's a it's a funny one. It's do you have an example? Well, I think it's a funny one. You'll tell me. Um, have you an example of a hero who succeeded th thanks to a company? So we have, you talk oh, about, yes. yeah, okay, good. A hero that succeeded thanks to a company. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think a lot, of, you know, quite frankly, I think a lot of, I, I think a lot of, uh, there's a lot of heroes in companies. And I think that's exactly why you just got to ask who can help people become. I mean, I I met heroes in my life, great directors who helped me become a better. Uh, I think this whole idea about, you know, entrepreneurs 
so work side and organization and being innovative and driving change. I think that that's exactly the examples of how a uh, corporate environment should and can be uh, a platform for growth and for for better uh, of, of people and, and and that that's exactly because for me, I mean the best most most of the leaders in, in, in my life, most leaders I've had has been the one that, that helped me, made me a better person, challenged me to go further, uh, rather than being uh, these very kind of self obsessed um, old school sort of leadership that we saw almost kind of military style. This is what I believe is this is the direction we're going in. So hopefully, uh, uh, companies and, and leaders going forward would be the best breeding ground of tomorrow's uh, heroes. Was that a cryptic answer? <laughs> yeah, no, no, great. Um, so, just if I if I want to maybe uh, ramp up a little bit, what I take from this discussion is probably that um, well, being or defining a purpose for a company um, is still a good thing to do. I think it is still an interesting vehicle to uh, transform the company. I mean, it's it's giving a, um, um, a direction and it's also transforming from the inside the, the company to embrace um, a bigger role. But I like the way that you introduce the thing that there is not heroes in a side which could be the company and the consumer. We can all be heroes and the consumer is also the hero, the hero of his life, the, the hero um, um, of his story. And in a way, we all have to write this, the, the, the story together if we want to accelerate the, the change we need for our planet. And uh, I just would like to finish with something I, I read uh, and you shared with me. You, you told me, well, the companies that will remain tomorrow are those who make us more happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. I, yeah, but I, yeah, I think so, yeah. Last yeah, comment, yeah. I can, yeah. I can, no, yes, I, I think it's, it's specifically that is the proof point. When we talk about authenticity, when we talk about the mistrust of companies, I think the real uh, accomplishment of any leadership is obviously to be, as an individual, as a citizen, achieve amazing things. So when I in the book say, you know, in a way, purpose is dead in its current shape and form. And we need a lead leadership where you don't ask why, but you ask who can you help people become. Because that puts focus on that enablement and, 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 and that possibility to make people the change agents in their own lives. And it's moved from the why can quickly end up being turning a creature rather than what a company should be more for coach, helping me to live here happier, better lives. And and, and not to make it a uh, politic, but it might really illustrate the sort of leadership that, that I, I kind of aspire towards. I mean, when Barack Obama stepped out um, and, and he did his last speech in Chicago, where he was obviously also elected into the Senate, uh, was very famous for his Yes We Can campaign that obviously all of us know. But he said that the campaign Yes We Can was not about people believing in his ability to create things. It was a rallying cry to each and every one of us to believe in our own ability to create things. And with tons of confidence on Yes We Can. So for me, that really why we and why we'll encourage the, the leaders and, and the brands and organizations at this call to kind of really reevaluate how they find meaning and how they uh, are aiming to play 
the mental role of people's lives because ultimately if we want to create society and we want to stand up and face this uh, massive climate emergency we need to unlock change and the ones that are the barriers for change are not institutions or world leaders or anything like that those are just bad excuses our biggest enemies of change are ourselves and that's exactly why i wanted to create this uh, model that was inspired by psychotherapy and coaching called the error that obviously asked uh, as, as one of the uh, final questions who can help Thank you very much, uh, Thomas, to, to have shared your thoughts and uh, your view about how communication has transformed itself for a decade now and keep on going. And um, thank you for uh, all the participants who follow us. I hope they enjoyed and thank you for the, co co the questions of the audience. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye.